Um, EcoChain, uh, by the way, Moss, I'm the co-founder of EcoChain Technologies. Um, and I hear a lot about um, all these service models uh, of companies uh, like, like Current and, and, and the other guys that, 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 that you heard talking. Um, and what I would like to talk about is more how do businesses produce more uh, sustainably? And not only from an energy perspective, but also from a resource perspective. And I would like to show you my first car, and I was so proud about it. I can talk for hours about it, but one of the most important things that I just came to realize later, when I uh, sold the car later, is that from an environmental point of view, this car, for this car, I was responsible for almost 95% of the impact. So looking at the car over its entire life cycle, I was the one causing the emissions just by fueling up my car day and night. So. Um, one of the big things is when we look at production, when we look at the user phase of products, it's very important that we look at the entire life cycle and find the optimization potential. And that's why it makes so much sense that Elon Musk radically wanted to change the car manufacturing industry by electrifying the cars, because that 95% that you saw was now reduced to practically zero based on the idea that you use green electricity. So now we create a new 95%, 95% of the impact, which is now in the um, uh, production phase, the production phase of the car. So if you look at, um, basically, not only at cars, but in general to, uh, to production, you see that a, a majority of the environmental impact from a resource and energy perspective resides in the value chain upstream, so the suppliers, how do they produce their products? What kind of energy do they, do they use? What kind of resources do they use? So now we get this huge complex problem because a car is built out of 10,000s of materials. And that's only talking about a car. When we, when we look at the world, we are talking about billions of products and semi-finished products, raw materials. So how can we comprehend such a vast amount of, of, of data? Or can we comprehend it? And how do we play with it? How do we make decisions? Then there's another thing, because from a resource perspective, we are talking about resource scarcity. We're talking about legislations that's getting in place where companies continuously, from a, from a, from a um, uh, uh, regulate, regulatory perspective, need to uh, get better over time. So this is huge. Especially when you look at complex supply chains, global supply chains, we talk about very... Um, uh, uh, yeah, we talk about a huge amount of, 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 of suppliers, networks that are, across, that, are, that are based across the globe. Based across the globe. Um, so how do we solve this big problem? That, that's the challenge of EcoChain. So we developed an online collaboration platform in which companies can assess all their resource, their energy and cost flows, and find optimizations within the boundaries of their company. And through the platform of EcoChain, they can invite their suppliers to do exactly the same for their product portfolio and look for optimizations. And you can identify the front runners by, by inviting them. And together with all these suppliers onto the uh, platform of EcoChain, you collaboratively um, engage in becoming uh, more sustainable. So EcoChain is a global platform. Um, and we offer our services as a SaaS solution, and we basically connect entire supply chains. So when your supplier changes to green electricity, or when you use an alternative material, the environmental effects are real-time calculated throughout the entire supply chain. So now companies like one of our leading co uh, customers, Philips, they can do sustainable sourcing on a super large scale. They can benchmark suppliers, they can incentivize suppliers to ultimately uh, bridge the gap between sustainability and profitability. So we help companies win, uh, with our platform to optimize their resource flows through, for instance, eco-design, but also apply the circular econo uh, economy uh, principles. We help them through eco-efficiency find uh, the hotspots in the company to focus on where to optimize and ultimately reduce their bottom line or increase their top line because of the incentivization of sustainable products. So we see that um, there's a huge business case behind sustainability. So from a cost perspective, optimizing energy and resource flows attain 
the, the, and, and uh, attract good people, um, create a more sustainable brand, create better products, uh, reduce the risks because you know exactly what are my uh, uh, risks in the supply chain based uh, on, for instance, uh, the resources that you use. And of course, you're able to attract better investment terms as a sustainable front runner. Um, we have a great team of, uh, of people. Um, uh, we're now entering our fifth year, and uh, this year we're turning uh, profitable. Uh, together with our global partners, uh, we're rolling out our technology, so we're focusing purely on the technology, and our partners um, do the implementations and the optimizations uh, for our customers. So that's EcoChain. Thank you very much. I have one question for you about when are you raising capital by any chance these well, days? Well, um, last year we were uh, um, indeed uh, looking for capital, but uh, things have changed a little as we get a huge attraction uh, uh, in, yeah, let's say, the, the, the last three months. So um, we're just reviewing the entire uh, yeah, uh, request for, for, for capital. Mm -hmm. So um, at, this, at, this, yes, yeah. at this moment, at this moment, no. Uh, because of the, um, yeah, we're, we're very well funded now also by our customers who are investing in our company. Okay. And rev revenue is always better That's than always cool. <laughs> yeah, Okay. Cool. Thank you very much.